I want to go to another compound that I get asked about a lot, and truthfully, I just don't know the data. And that is, well, we'll start with THC and we'll move to, to CBD. And then the THC touches, I guess you could think about it through two lenses, right? Which is the developing brain versus the quote unquote developed brain. So let's start with the latter since I think it's more clear in the former that the developing brain probably is not benefiting from THC. So it's probably not even worth asking the question, is THC a good sleep aid in a teenager? I think the answer would be clearly no. But you and I, is THC a pro-sleep compound? No. I, I don't think I'd feel comfortable in suggesting that it's a pro-sleep compound. And I would you say that independent of strains? I mean, you know, the, anybody who's experimented these things will tell you, you know, well, sativa maybe not, but indica, right. yes. I mean, firstly, I don't think we have enough data to, you know, pinwheel out the different strains and sort of parametrically slice the the strain pie, as it were, and ask that. But what I do know from the evidence, firstly, I should say that, you know, acute use of THC typically has a quote unquote beneficial effect such that it will decrease the amount of time it takes you to fall asleep. What's called your sleep latency. That's the only thing it impacts is latency. So it reduces the latency and it makes it feel as though, well, and you are. And that essentially, would give you more duration. So yeah, so you're falling asleep faster. Total duration, not so much. But what is happening, however, unfortunately, is that that THC just like alcohol, has been shown to be a very robust blocker of your dream sleep, of your REM sleep. Add that to the fact that with chronic use of THC, you build up a tolerance to the benefit on falling asleep faster, so that now you actually have to start using more of the compound to get the same reduction in sleep onset time, means that that tolerance and dependency, I don't think is necessarily a good thing. When you then cease the use of THC, what you find in the studies is a pretty horrific insomnia rebound where people then actually have miserable sleep. And it usually typically leads to then falling off the bandwagon of abstinence if that's their goal. And people then start having to use again to gain back that crutch, that you may not necessarily have needed otherwise. So I think the the evidence right now, especially with the REM sleep blocking effect of THC and the importance of REM sleep that we know of, I just don't feel comfortable in thinking that THC itself is really the sleep aid of the future. And that there is more evidence on the THC side. CBD is starting to gain more research traction I don't think there's enough studies done. I think part of the reason with CBD is, and THC, it's just, it's hard to do these studies because they're hard to get funded because of still some of the moral. And now I am not, again, I'm not puritanical about this. I'm not casting any judgment at all. And I've often thought, well, you know, what would it take? Maybe, you know, I should do like a Kickstarter and try and crowdsource enough money to do the appropriate CBD studies, because I think CBD is more promising on the data right now. The data for CBD is that you get that benefit of falling asleep faster. By the way, would you, just to interject for a second, would you be able to get an IRB approval to do a real world study where a bunch of people were just using wearables and you could homogenize and uniform the wearable and the CBD and things like that, but without having to do it as an in-house sleep study. Do you think the The wearables are good enough that you could get enough data in the community? I would probably do a hybrid. I mean, no, that makes sense. The irony of it's of THC and CBD often (laughs) being used as hybrids is not lost on me, but I would probably do a hybrid where I would do some tracking of sleep ecologically in the, in the home setting as it were. And then have a couple of nights where they would actually come in and we would measure their high grade sleep quality because the trackers out there right now, you know, they're just not quite accurate. They're not clinical grade enough for me to understand the quality and the stages of your sleep. I think trackers are not bad right now. And But even those metrics, you'd get a clue, right? Like even with the ethanol. Somewhat of a clue. Yeah, you can see it. I think, you know, people often ask me what's the best sleep tracker. And I would say it's the sleep tracker that you wear every night. 
you know, I think m most of them are much of a muchness in terms of their current inaccuracy. So I would do a hybrid study probably where I would do some tracking outside with things like wristwatches or rings. And then I would do some in laboratory studies. But I think for CBD, things are actually looking more promising. CBD does give you that same benefit. You fall asleep faster. You don't seem to get the hit on REM sleep. Now, I don't think there's enough studies for me to yet feel comfortable in saying definitively you don't. But for the small handful of non placebo controlled trials, for whatever it's worth, and we are talking about hands up here, everyone, no recommendations, no promissorial notes. This is just very early tentative preliminary evidence suggests that you may not get the REM sleep deficit, which is good. The other thing is that you typically don't see the dependency issues, nor do you get the insomnia rebound when you stop using CBD. And the final thing I think that's interesting with CBD is that it may actually have some benefits in certain sleep disorders. There's some as the little bit of evidence that it may reduce the severity of sleep apnea, but I think that that's just, you know, one or two studies. There's some benefit that's happening in PTSD with CBD treatment to help with PTSD sleep problems and sleep problems are real problematic issues with PTSD patients. So I think anything there that could be of help as long as it's medically safe and doesn't compromise your sleep, unlike THC, would be a good thing too. Probably two caveats, or at least one caveat. It does seem to be somewhat dose dependent. Um, it, I don't think it's very clear right now what the optimal dose is. There have been some times where people have actually suggested that the use of CBD at a certain dose is actually wake promoting rather than sleep promoting. So I think there may actually be this U-shaped function when it comes to CBD that what or some kind of a, a, of a function. I don't know what the function is going to be, but there's going to be perhaps a sweet spot of a dose concentration that is optimal for CBD's benefit on sleep. And there may be other doses that are actually detrimental to sleep and we need to stay away from them. How is CBD doing that and having that kind of benefit of sleep? There was actually even some evidence that it may actually increase the amount of deep sleep, which was interesting. And that was just one single study, small study. Again, I'm not believing it. I'm not going to go out there and start telling people to, to take CBD on the basis of that single study. I am saying that I think it's got promise right now, but we don't know. How could it be doing that? Well, one of the interesting things could actually be thermoregulation. In some of those studies, they were actually finding that the core body temperature decreased with CBD administration. And we were just describing that when you drop core body temperature, you sleep better when you increase core body temperature by way of something thermogenic like alcohol, or it's just a hot room or a big meal, that increase in core body temperature is worse for sleep. So CBD may actually be having its mechanistic benefit through the thermoregulatory system is one of my hypotheses. The other is that it's indirect through its anxiolytic benefits. I think probably the greatest, strongest evidence right there, out there right now for CBD's clinical efficacy is for anxiety. And I actually think, and I've tried to read as much of that data as I can, I think it's actually pretty interesting. I think one of the major causes of insufficient sleep and poor sleep right now is that everyone is just cranked in terms of anxiety and that they wake up or you know, we are constantly on reception in this modern day of life. And the only time that our brain goes from reception to reflection is when our head hits the pillow. And that's the last time that you need to be ruminating and catastrophizing and having that Rolodex of anxiety. So I think if CBD is efficacious for lowering anxiety and anxiety is one of the causes of poor sleep in society, then part of that benefit may not be through a direct mechanism on sleep regulating centers, but instead a secondary benefit of lowering anxiety, which perhaps lowers that sympathetic fight or flight branch of the nervous system, which means that you shift into a more parasympathetic state and or it drops core body temperature. Both of those routes, I think, are in my mind, the tenable hypotheses that in you know, a crowdsourced study that I would want to do. And I don't know if people want to do that study. You know, 
comments in wherever comments can be. But I, I would, I'll, I'll speak would want for to... myself. I would love to see that study because anecdotally, not so much in myself, but I also think I'm, I sleep reasonably well, but in people who don't sleep that well, I have anecdotally seen some pretty impressive results with CBD. Yeah. Uh, and other times That's I've seen I've nothing. Seen. And what's interesting is in some of the people in whom I've seen impressive results, it's people who have been largely recalcitrant to other big guns. Again, I think whenever you can sleep without pharmacology, you're doing a good thing. But I agree. When you look at things like trazodone, Thorazine, with their anti-ruminative properties, and you see patients who, even at 25 and 50 milligrams, doesn't matter. That's right. You know, doesn't, and it's I, not helping know, them sleep. And yet, you know, CBD, CBD does. Ends up having, yeah. and, and at that point, you start to think, well, it's less likely to be the placebo effect because you've tried all of these other things that didn't work. Why would this silly little oil work? This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional health care services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. 